Hey everyone, welcome to Token Topics. XRP is the topic of this video. We have some awesome news that has come out recently about Crosswalk, an XRP ledger wallet similar to MetaMask, which is a pretty big deal for the ecosystem. We'll look into that. Also, we're going to hear from Ripple on the Digital Pound Foundation. Also, huge news. FedNow is going live this month. We're going to look into that. And huge potential on the horizon with tokenization. Trillions are on the horizon. We will go over these topics and more. Please remember, any investing is risky. I'm also not paid for or sponsored by Ripple. Let's dive in. Keep your crypto safe with a decent biometric hardware wallet. With talks about cyber attacks or exchanges going down, it's imperative to keep your assets safe. And just know with Descent, your private keys are your private keys and only you have access to them. In the description below, I'm going to put affiliate links where you can receive $30 off the retail price. There's also a two wallet package deal that's a great value. There's no need to wait. Order your wallet and keep your crypto safe now. This is a big headline from Forbes. The party is just getting started. If you're getting into crypto right now, this is a perfect opportunity. If anybody thinks that they may have missed the boat last time, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Regulations are just forming in the United States, and this party is ready to get started. So asset tokenization, a trillion-dollar market opportunity, J.P. Morgan, BlackRock, and Goldman Sachs think so. Now, before I dive into this article, what blockchain projects are talked about on this channel? The ones that are specialized in tokenization. The most recent crypto market surge attracted billions of dollars funding the development of an ambiguous, resilient global decentralized network. Startup investors poured a staggering $94 billion into emerging Web3 ecosystem companies. However, the industry became engulfed in excessive hype and speculative fervor, uh, leading to several market failures and bankruptcies. I just want to stop right there. We needed these bankruptcies and some of these failures to shake out the garbage, all the garbage projects, and to uh, have a clear path for the real winners. So although it was painful, it was much needed. It's actually healthy. All right, indeed. Major U.S. financial institutions overseeing a staggering $27 trillion in assets are striving to offer clients exposure to Bitcoin and crypto. Institutions are proactively exploring Web3 use case applications to enhance customer engagement, improve transaction experience, optimize processes, streamline operations, create efficiencies, and unlock other benefits. The market for asset tokenization is swiftly evolving into a promising opportunity worth trillions of dollars. It helps secure ownership rights, enables asset fractionalization, which is big, I want to add, boosts liquidity and makes financial transactions more convenient and transparent. Uh, proxying and recording an asset as programmable token on a blockchain enhances asset ownership. Mobility empowers instant and atomic settlement, provides real-time on-chain visibility of asset lifecycle. And not just the the benefit of the money that comes from it, but check this out. Boston Consulting Group reports that asset tokenization can generate annual savings of $20 billion and just the global clearing and settlement cost alone. And check this out. By 2030, it could unlock a $16 trillion global market for tokenized illiquid assets. Boom, right there. Now, it's a lengthy article. I'll put the link down below. But again, just going back to what I was talking about, nobody is too, if they're getting in now, we are still early. All right, this is put out by the Daily Hoddle. JP Morgan Chase and 40 other U.S. banks conducting FedNow trials ahead of the instant payment services launch. Banking giant JP Morgan Chase and 40 other U.S. banks are testing the Federal Reserve's new instant payment infrastructure called FedNow. According to a new Federal Reserve press release, 41 banks and 15 service providers are wrapping up FedNow test trials ahead of an official launch of the service, which is scheduled for late July this month. According to the Federal Reserve, the FedNow service aims to enable businesses and individuals to send and receive instant payments anytime. The Federal Reserve says it plans to increase the number of banks using FedNow this year and in years to come, 
until all 10,000 have adopted the technology. Other large banks testing the service to start using it in July include Bank of New York, Mellon, U.S. Bancorp, and Wells Fargo. The U.S. Department of Treasury is also intended to use the service. Okay, the Digital Pound Foundation put out. In the third of our member video series, we talk with Susan F. of Ripple about the potential benefits of a digital pound, what frameworks might need to be put into place for a CBDC, and why Ripple chose to become a member of the Digital Pound Foundation. Thanks a lot for being here today, Susan. Um, We thought what we might do is just kick off with you telling us a bit more about your role at Ripple and how that relates to central bank digital currencies generally, and then also your interest from a, a corporate point of view in the digital pound. Absolutely. So I am the head of policy at Ripple, and our goal is to advocate for policy frameworks globally that um, encourage the development of responsible ecosystems for crypto assets, including central bank digital currencies. Um, We are very excited about what's happening in the UK because London and the government generally has taken a very Uh, forward-looking approach with respect to fintech, with respect to CBDCs in particular, I think as exemplified by the work that the Bank of England is doing on the digital pound, including with its engagement groups, um, engagement with industry, and really just taking into account um, all all viewpoints when considering when and if and how to implement a digital pound. Ripple has an office in London. We're growing our footprint here, and we're excited to be part of you know what we consider to be a really dynamic um, uh, environment with respect to crypto in general. And what do you see as the prospects for CBDCs, kind of on a global scale? Because obviously, there's a lot happening in different countries, um, and that seems to be accelerating. No, absolutely. I mean, we see uh, digital currencies and central bank digital currencies as the a natural evolution of how people, individuals, and countries exchange value. Our existing currencies were created in a much less globalized world. We think CBDCs can offer protect- the same protections afforded to fiat currencies um, bound by the regulations and laws of each country's Um, Most countries that are exploring CBDCs currently are looking to solve specific domestic challenges. Uh, But ultimately, we think that each country is going to have to implement a holistic strategy in order to allow their CBDC to interact with global markets efficiently and ensure that they can scale and evolve to meet future requirements. Um, Ultimately, we think that central banks as as they work on their individual projects will need to come together to agree on some common standards and protocols that will enable interoperability. Uh, And we think that they can do this while drawing on the knowledge and infrastructure that the private sector has to offer to accelerate these initiatives. But we're excited by what we're seeing, I think, on a global scale. Yeah, me too. And um, obviously we've got CBDCs and we've got other new forms of money like stable coins and you know cryptocurrencies more broadly how do you think that's changing the way we transact and what what are sort of the wider implications of of a digital currency we see um digital cryptocurrencies central bank digital currencies as encouraging a number of different initiatives including financial inclusion we think digital money will help to increase access to financial services for under and unbanked populations and also encourage Uh, or I should say enhance direct person-to-person payments. We think that the initiatives will help to enhance existing payment infrastructures. It will, digital currencies can help increase the speed and efficiency of payments. Uh, We think that the um, initiatives generally will help to foster innovation. So using digital features like smart contracts and programmable money will be the basis of new financial services. We also think there's an opportunity for digital currencies to help reduce energy use and environmental resources by by presumably phasing out the printing of paper money and the minting of coins. Um, So we think that there are a lot of, uh, we see a lot of different threads being fostered by the development of digital currencies. At the same time, we recognize that central banks are really grappling with how to encourage these while also maintaining financial stability and control of their monetary systems. And this comes back to, you know, as different countries work on different initiatives, ensuring that 
um, we're not building, building walled gardens, that there's interoperability between currencies, that currencies can flow freely between countries and do so in a way that allows, um, that maintains financial stability will really be, you know, at the heart of the, the challenge ahead for, for all countries considering CBDCs. Obviously, Ripple was one of the founding members of the Digital Pound Foundation. So what do you see as a company or you individually as the benefits of being a member of the foundation? I mean, we are really encouraged by the way that the foundation has brought together a lot of different actors in the ecosystem to share ideas, to put together policy proposals, to work on and discuss real life implementations of a digital pound. So in addition to considering the theoretical aspects of digital money, we are actually working on concrete applications uh, that we hope to um, or introduce and discuss and debate over the next year as, as the Bank of England considers um, additional, it consider, continues its work with respect to uh, the formation of a digital pound. So we're excited by the energy that everyone is bringing to the project the different perspectives and ideas that they're bringing to the table and and the opportunity to influence both um, the policy frameworks that go into place with respect to the digital pound, but also to really try and help um, bring to life some of the, the real life practical considerations, implications of a digital pound. Quite a road trip ahead for Ripple as Brooke Entwistle posted four continents in four weeks on a road for Ripple, from the inclusive fintech forum in Kigali, Rwanda, to the Point Zero Forum in Zurich, Switzerland, and finally closer to home next week in Bangkok, Thailand, as Ripple hosts our policy summit with our awesome partners, TRM Labs, once again. All these stops and events are underpinned by one common thread, that open dialogue and consistent engagement between regulators and private sector will only further advance the digital asset ecosystem. Super pumped for our event, which I've been told is nearly at capacity, and I'm looking forward to a packed agenda featuring a stellar lineup of speakers, including the Bank of Thailand and our valued Thai partner, SCB Siam Commercial Bank, SCB 10X, and Innovest X. That is quite a lineup, and it's going to be interesting what comes out of this. And congratulations to Stu Alderati. Ripple posted that we are proud to announce our chief legal officer, Stu Alderati, has been honored as a 2023 Burton Awards Legends in Law winner. Next, Ripple has unveiled Crossmark, a digital wallet designed for the XRP ledger. Let's learn more about Crossmark. In a recent tweet, Ripple X, a development division of a prominent cryptocurrency payment company, used the platform to inform the public about the imminent launch of an eagerly awaited browser-based wallet designed for the XRP ledger called, called Crossmark. The unveiling of Crossmark, a web wallet created in collaboration with Ripple, brings forth a range of features comparable to Ethereum's renowned MetaMask wallet. And anybody who knows about Ethereum and MetaMask knows that that is huge. So Crossmark is a browser first digital wallet built on top of the XRP ledger and it will provide an easy way to sign transactions and switch between networks. So bridging the gap between dApps and the XRP ecosystem by incorporating functionalities reminiscent of MetaMask, Crossmark introduces a novel approach that is custom made for the XRP ledger. In addition, Crossmark offers XRP holders a smooth and intuitive experience utilizing web browser extensions, enabling effortless management of their XRP transactions and seamless interaction with decentralized applications or dApps. Just as MetaMask has significantly impacted the Ethereum ecosystem, Crossmark endeavors to bridge the divide between decentralized applications and users within the XRP ecosystem. This integration aims to equip developers with a robust tools or tool that enables the seamless incorporation of the XRP ledger features into web applications, fostering a more diverse and inclusive ecosystem of developer solutions. This is huge and very exciting to see this development. Here we go. I've been talking about the death of the world's reserve dollar for some time. US dollar weaponization is sending countries scrambling for alternative currencies, says IMF official report. 
The International Monetary Fund's executive director for Russia says the West's decision to lock out certain countries from the global payment system is forcing many nations to look for a substitute currency. The world has witnessed how the U.S. and its allies use economic and financial sanctions to penalize Russia for its war in Ukraine, according to a new report from Sputnik. According to the IMF official, the use of sanctions as a stick is creating a more divided global economy. The blatant use by the West as a weapon of international trade finance as well as the dollar and the euro itself makes a fragmentation of the world economy not only inevitable but also irreversible. So in March 2022, the West imposed foreign sanctions that froze about $300 billion worth of Russia reserves. The sanctions also cut off Russian banks from the SWIFT uh, system, a cross-border payment system dominated by the dollar and euro, which I want to stop right there, which also brought blockchain into the spotlight. And in fact, Russia has been experimenting with its own blockchain. And just recently, Ethiopia asked to join BRICS. France, I believe there's talks about France joining BRICS. And if you've been subscribed to the channel, I've actually talked about BRICS quite a bit. In fact, stay tuned because I'm going to make a special video that's going to talk a lot about uh, BRICS and uh, the current state of the dollar. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please do consider subscribing and also hit the like. It does help the channel. Thank you.